Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be making this amazing grand piano card. It's got free artwork with it, which I'll go through with you in a minute. Um, it's got a little stand there, but it is just a stand that holds the lid open when the recipients received it. It does fold flat for posting. You can either pop it inside like that, obviously, because I've got a great bulk of flour on there, it's going to need a box. But, it, you know, you can fold it that way. Or if you've got no flowers there, you can fold it on the top so they can see the message straight away. So it's entirely up to you. Um, the stand does come up, like I say, you just pop it like that. I was going to invent a little slot there, but you don't need it. It stays on its own if you want to. You could put a stopper there, but it just inhibits the closure of it. I suppose the only thing it doesn't do is play a little old tune there. But it's going to be a great showstopper. Um, on someone's mantelpiece they're going to love it because it's one of those cards that you can just leave out so it's going to be a nice one now with the artwork what I've done I'll just move that out of the way is I've given you the template on how to make it with a keyboard and um, the keyboard you get twice because I thought if you've got the template cut out and you're going to reuse the template like I do because I printed it in card then you don't want to keep printing that sheet just for you know the artwork so these are the inserts so you've got one going each way this is the little stand where your music sheet goes on now these music sheets you've got sending you lots of love and best wishes on your special day because i thought that was quite generic and then we've also got wishing you a merry christmas and a happy new year and a blank one so you can do your lovely handwriting and really personalize it um, I have drawn everything, so even the music sheet I drew painlessly and shrunk it and made little tiny text. So, um, yeah, that's free on my Kofi shop. You just need to put 0, .00. Um There is an option to put a donation if you want to and just download it and print it out. There is also a video which I'll put in the link of how to do that if you don't know. So let's get started and make this gorgeous grand piano card. I do love it. I do love it. <laughs> so... It does actually come out, at, it will fit in a 7x5 envelope if it's flat. If it's not flat, then you're going to have to make a box envelope. But it's like 6 and 3 quarter high this way, by 5 that way. So I've just taken an A4 piece of black card, folded it in half and cut it down to 5 inches. So that some of the work I haven't got to do. Now this is the template for the card base, as I showed you here. So this is the card blade, so just cut around it like this so you've got the base now you don't need to cut the base up unless you're going to use it obviously so what i like to do is that is going to be the card like that so i want to draw on the back of my card because i'm going to draw around this template so i'm going to pop it on literally on the back like that with the seam seam crease there and make sure it's right at the bottom and you can see you've already got the line drawn the straight line drawn by cutting it down to five now i just need to see where my pencil oh there it is right over there has gone and then all you need to do then is draw around now you can see that's a little bit off there but it doesn't matter so by doing it on the back that's going to make it a lot easier you've only got that little piece to cut out there you can see the shine of the pencil so there's not much to do now i do two at the same time if you're struggling or you've got a different piece of card or whatever you can just open it up onto a plain piece of card draw around the whole thing and cut it out okay so i'll just go ahead and cut that little bit out there and then we'll come back right you can see i'll cut that out in one go and the silver line of this pencil shiny line is I've just gone inside of it and where I missed there I just trimmed that little bit off so you've got no pencil shown on the back so that's your card blank there so far now if you've printed this um, either with your A4 or your 8.5 by 11 because I design everything that it doesn't matter which one you use you just have to choose actual size on your printer just choose the paper and actual size like I say there is a little bit of a demonstration on a video that I've done for that. So what you can do is if you've done it at actual size, goodbye bits of paper, you can take a scoreboard, move my piano, I don't want to knock him, and this is the front of the card, and you put it up this way, okay? Now, 
you could put it the other way actually because then you won't have any waste of that paper so it doesn't matter but there's the front has an extra score in it but you don't need to score the front that is not really making that clear is it <laughs> let's start again so let me show you what we're going to be doing and then that will make sense so this is the card this bit because you can see the black bit that gets cut out so two inches down to there gets cut away um so if you wanted to you could cut that away now or what i'm saying is you could turn it over and score it like that so that you're having the bottom bit here with no scores on because i'm just thinking you could use that for this piece that we cut out if you've got a big enough bit of card then it doesn't matter which mine was i've got a strip here of my a4 which i'm going to cut that out of so i don't need it but if you wanted to save that little bit of card cut it out first before you do the scores if you haven't cut it to actual size and you're just using the template or you've enlarged it or shrunk it then you can obviously use these lines here and just not on a scoreboard obviously because i've been in the wrong place just take a ruler on your template put the ruler over i know it's moving around but you obviously will keep it still and then take a scoring tool ballpoint pen that's got no ink in it and just score down your ruler so you don't have to use a scoreboard i'm just doing it because at actual size it prints exactly what these measurements are and i'm going to go all the way down like i said so it's just at one one and a half two and then only this side is a quarter of an inch so you can use it to mark it's going to be a cut line and then if you turn it around just on that quarter of an inch we can do all the way up you just want to mark a quarter of an inch now it doesn't matter if this isn't a quarter of an inch it could be a bit bigger a bit shorter all right so that's all that's doing is giving you that little score there so we've got two score lines here and then that's a cut line now if you cut all this off as an accident don't worry about it you can just fold that little bit over and glue it on here we're just going to fold it and glue it you'll see what i mean in a second but you can just cut that strip off so don't worry about that it might be easier for you to do it that way so all you need to do is cut up through the middle now change my glasses i'll use my cutting glasses and can't see anything so just gonna cut up through the center there and we're going to go all the way up to that quarter of an inch line there okay so we've gone all the way up to all of the scores and then we're going to cut along here this one the quarter of an inch here and cut all of that off so that's all going to fall off which is fine there. i've cut that a bit wonky you'd normally a little bit better than that so it's quite awkward to get in here to go backwards if you've got big scissors that's what i'm saying you can either cut the whole thing off and make a quarter of an inch strip absolutely fine and just stick it on there or you can um go in and cut from the other end so when i need to get into little gaps i'll use little scissors so because i've got a turn here i'll just go in with my little scissors if i can get even get in there it's a bit tricky which is why sometimes it's easier just to make a quarter of an inch strip i designed it so that you could get it all out of the same bit of card it's not really a problem whichever way you choose so we're just going to be cutting up to that score line there see and then that folds over like that it's going to make a stand and then that bit goes up like that so you've just got that little square there with score lines i don't need this just got that little square there with score lines so i'm gonna have some glue just to that little square oh come on glue there we go little baby finger because that's a big old blob now i'm going to fold it over to the other side and hold it down and let it take and then the other thing we're going to do and i'll do it while i'm waiting for that is we're going to bend this up i'll do it this way but we're going to do it the other way and fold that piece in half and that's going to make your stand the grand piano lid to stay open so 
we're going to fold that over and keep it there still got my finger on it because it's drying and then fold that one back that way and we'll put glue along there just so you can't see the seam at the bottom when it's open it'll be away from you just put some glue along there fold that down so you can see mine's quite a wonky stick there so if you want to get a really nice straight stick just cut a quarter of an inch of card width um and the width of the card or even longer if you want the lid to be higher and then just a little quarter of an inch score there to glue onto the card so it doesn't matter that just folds around but it wouldn't matter if you just stuck it straight on there and you could trim this up after you can make it a bit straighter that's fine as well just don't cut the card blank so that's that section so that's our lid now the one thing you need to do is you'll see this stays open quite a lot so just make sure that that is really reinforced down see it wants to lie flat now so that when you put the I was calling it stick at stand up <laughs> it stays in place so now you'll see that here we've got a little bit of a funny edge so where the score line was so I'm just going to make sure that that's neater and just go down because it always looks nicer I want it to look the best so these little bits trimmed off now the score lines here make the stand now You'll notice when I fold this one that there is a gap here between these two. Okay, now that is so, it's got nothing to do with any mechanism. If I fold it down, you'll see there is a gap there. Now, all that is is so that that can be pushed back so that you can see the music sheet a little bit better. Otherwise, it's going to be, if it was straight, it would be bolt upright like that. And then that would be difficult for people to see it on the shelf. So I just wanted it so that when it's open, you can push it back a little bit and it not interfere and it looks better on the shelf. That's the only reason behind it. So we're going to fold all of these score lines. There's only three. And then they go like that. So you're just making this section. So you've got a, a valley then a mountain, then a valley. And they're going to squash together and that's just to hold your music stand and your music sheet. So they get glued from the back. So you can see you've just got to put glue or tape in that channel. I'll just put a quick piece of tape in there. Now what that does mean as well with this card, if you don't like this, um, what I'm going to show you next, you can add an extra piece of card. So I'm just going to fold that up. So that's now together, turn it over, and we've got a little bit standing up. What I mean is, this will bend on the back. So it will fold, so you can fold it that way to go in a card if you want as well. Now if you don't like that, obviously you can put like an extra piece of card across the back to stop it from bending. I don't mind it, but it's entirely up to you. I found it useful, because when I was doing the flower display, I did that to it. <laughs> while I was working on the flowers so it didn't bother me but at the end like this bit that you've cut off if you didn't have score lines in it you could just put that back over the top maybe just cut that corner off and then that will support it and stop it from moving so there's another little tippy for you on that one right so we've done that and then all we need to do now is cut out all the pieces so you've got two inserts you can see i've drawn over mine because i drew around it and not use it now you've got the option because i've cut them both ways where you've got the black line for cutting them out on the sheet if you don't want that black line to show then see there that that was the original side that i cut out so if you were cutting it out that way you could pop it in that way if you're going to actually decorate this with inks and stamps or you can cut around it onto pattern paper um or you can you know just use stamps all over it paper cover it all sorts of things so however you want to decorate it but i've done it so that you can use the black line down so you can flip them and you've got the two there they're opposite ways so you have the black line on both not showing and you could put it on the front if you wanted to so it's entirely up to you how you want to use your inserts the other thing we've got is the obviously the keyboard which i drew it's a 61 key keyboard because there's lots of different sizes and I wanted it to be sort of realistic in a way. Um, sometimes you see 
grand piano cards and they've only got like about seven keys and I don't know that's just not how a piano is and it looks fine because it's art and art is art and you can do what you like but I thought if I do one that's more um in keeping because if you're giving it to a music lover they'll know and probably grand pianos have more keys than 61 but it would would have been tiny so now we can just open up the card fold that out the way and just line up your keyboards you've got an even border both sides and at the bottom don't worry about the score line area so much it is designed to fit perfectly in there make sure you put up the right way black keys near the end and then with the extra strip or that extra piece of card that you didn't score you could just butt that up to there and this is your see i'll use some templates i'll print them in card and use them just just templates and you can you don't have to make a black piano you can make any color you want and then we can just draw around this little bit here yeah you could have a bright pink one orange one green one whatever and i'm sure they'd all look fabulous so we're just gonna snip this bit out i'm gonna go inside the um pencil line on this it's tight wasn't it So that one sticks on there but i'm going to put my sheet music on there i'm going to make a christmas one so you just fold your sheet music in half and this is printed onto card so it's got a nice bit of robust now you can take your scissors or the side of a table and hold one side in and curve the other see you've got that curve in your music sheet now if you don't mind the dimension like the foam pads and things like that on your card and you're not going to be popping it inside when you fold it so it's going to stay on the outside then you could add foam pads here on this piece to stop it from the curves from going just to support those curves but i haven't done that on mine and it's fine um but i expect with postage it will probably go flat so if you want to keep that upright then just add some foam tape near to the crease and then glue on the fold so glue on the fold like that i'll do it and then you'll know what i'm talking about it's a foam pad here excellent just what i needed and it was there it's like a miracle I'm gonna cut these up they're probably still too long all right so two little pads just put them near to the crease line but not on the crease line and that will keep that from falling back just give it support make sure your sheet music's up the right way and then just pop that on there so keep the middle upright so that it takes before you push down and now you've got your dimension built in so to speak on that it's a bit wonky donkey isn't it let's go over a little bit that way i think it was my cutting of the stand to be honest but you can see you've got that dimension in there and you've got your foam pads in there so it will never go any flatter than that whereas mine's got more dimension but you can double up the foam pads so and just make sure that that center sticks down and then that just goes on here so if i fold this up so you can see you only want to put it not all the way down to the crease, you want about halfway and in the middle. So you can use things like your measuring mat to know where halfway is. So halfway would be there. So we could just put a bit of glue along the bottom here. Oops. <laughs> there we go. Should have used tape. Put a bit of glue along the bottom, going at halfway. I'm going to have to cut that a bit nicer. It's not going to cut very well, Sarah. I'm going to slide it down a bit so I can see glue. I need to let that take ideally. And then you can see you've got your music in place. And now it's just all about putting the insert in and decorating it. And as you know, my channel is all about the know-how. And I'm going to make this into a Christmas one. And let me just show you. Can you see that that's not 
wanting to stay down that's because we've opened it up so again go back in see it's up as soon as you reinforce that crease it's fine and then just once you've got something on it and then it just stands so it doesn't slide or anything it's pretty good so i don't think you need to make any stoppers and things like that for it so it's really good so there you go that's how you make your grand piano and decorate it so have fun making that guys and i'll see you again real soon bye